Welcome to Alpha Omega Radio Interviews. My name is Luis Moreno, and we continue talking to Justin Dorado. He shares some insight on how these I.O. shows are put together. So stay tuned for part two of this two-part interview. Tell us a little bit about what goes into organizing a show. What's involved? Okay. Well, I.O., um, like I said, when I had the idea, I, I, uh, I wanted a venue, but I didn't really know where to start. And luckily, I had met uh, Ricardo the pants now known as uh, Ricky Brugal <laughs> right. Amante and um, he's, he was already well connected having worked with Ape Peoples and been an intern and worked at uh, Blood Festival before and wow. worked at uh, Pulse Wave and uh, we headed off and got started talking about stuff and it turns out that he knows um, a lot of people and uh, he just has really good ideas about who to book and um, and uh, he's good at making mixed tapes I like to call them you know, like when, you, when you line up a bunch of people to play you want them to have like similar sounds right so that um, um, you get a night of music that really goes well together around the time of blip festival 2012 which was around may or so uh, right. of this year um, you guys released a compilation album that's right we made the, the uh, io compilation the io chip mm -hmm. music compilation volume one right which was uh, a compilation of tracks from artists who had played I.O. up until that point. People from 2009 onward to uh, the beginning of 2012 and we asked everybody who had been involved, we had all their email addresses, if they would please um, record a track uh -huh. or submit a track that they had previously released and a lot of them did that. At the end, how many did you end up uh, collecting? We collected as many as there are on the album. It's <laughs> 19 tracks. That's right. Oh, That's man. Right. And uh, how long did that process take? I'm sure it was... It uh... took a couple of months just to get it from, oh, you know, man. some people already had a song and they just yeah. um, sent us the file. Some people had the idea and they needed to record it and they uh -huh. did. And some people just made something from scratch. So after that, after I got all the, the tracks, um, I mastered the album, which is something I'd never done before. <laughs> I mastered tracks before, but this was, yeah. uh, you know, it was a fun experience, and I'm glad that, that I got the chance to do that. So I mastered it, and I pressed it, and um, uh, again, Ricardo was the one who um, got, who knew everybody, and, and yeah. asked them, and, and got, got them to uh, to submit a track. And, mm -hmm. and you know, if, if a couple of months had gone by, he reminded them that. Cool. The, the deadline was coming up, <laughs> so that was a collaborative effort, and we released. It. We decided to release it for the Blood Festival because that's right. That was incredible timing, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, that wasn't an accident. That was um, that was intentional, right? That was intentional because it was going to <laughs> coincide with the release of uh, my friend Marjorie Becker, uh, Chitography. Is she goes by that name? She had a photo book that uh, I was helping her put out. And the compilation was, we decided that it was going to be one of the incentives for ordering. The oh, book. awesome. So if yeah. you buy the book, you also get a free compilation right. CD. So. All right, so you were a guitar player at a punk band uh, years ago and um, transitioned into, you know, the music, scene, the chip music scene and stuff like that. Tell us a little bit about that process. Yeah, that's right. I was uh, in, in a punk band for a long time called Dead on a Friday. It was a Queens, New York um, punk band that uh, I was in as uh, the guitar player and then playing backup vocals with uh, a couple guys that I met here in Queens, New York. And uh, we had a really good time for a long time just playing music. And, um, you know, after, actually we were, we were together in the band for a long time, like eight years. Wow. And, um, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, things happen. Like, people just start getting interested in new things and... and and uh, I started getting interested more and more into chip music and, and less into music that I had been a fan of for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, chip music, some of it came from the aesthetic and, and the idea of punk rock, but a lot of it also came out of uh, dance music, which I right. had been aware of, um, but didn't really know too much about. And some of it came out of, uh, you know, uh, tracking and, and, and just, uh, you know, like, like demo scene culture and things that was brand new to me and it was all fresh and and, and new and and uh, very very harsh and and, and very uh, hard to get into but I think uh, after a while I started getting so much into it that it was very rewarding to to yeah to understand and have an appreciation for something that for a long time was just something I was you know aware of but not really into mm -hmm. so um, uh, I just started uh, going to more and more shows and 
eventually I spent more time um, promoting chip music shows and going to chip music shows. And I Thinking long term, uh, what would you say is the ultimate goal of IO and these shows that you're putting together? I think the long term goal is, is what it's always been to uh, sort of be a supplement to the shows that are going on in New York City. Um, Pulse Wave is the big show and everybody enjoys going to it and um, you know I, I wanted to do something a little bit different than Pulse Wave uh -huh. but, um, but also um, have it be a good media, a, a, good, a good venue for, for chip music in New York City. Um, I think whatever we do in the future it should, should uh, further chip music in that way, not necessarily through shows but also through um, compilations um, or through just uh, projects like for example the Chiptography book that um, just creates awareness and and, and uh, allows there to be a form of a place for um, people to listen to, to talk about, to, to expand you know the understanding and the awareness of chip music. Yeah because even after all these years there's still new artists coming out, there's new people getting inspired and they're just looking for all this stuff. Yeah and it's... that's right, that's right. Um, let's see the very first I.O. was uh, Chris Kaiser, um, De Pants, and Bubbly Fish. <laughs> wow, and what a know, lineup. And then, uh, yeah, that was a great lineup. And that was the lineup for the one year anniversary. So. Oh, man. Kaiser's first shows. A few years later, he played Pulse Wave. Amazing, amazing show at Pulse Wave. Um, and then, of course, he played Blue Festival <laughs> 2012. Yeah. <laughs> Again, amazing. And uh, I'm, I'm just glad that we had the, the opportunity to have like uh, him and, and uh, Alex Kiefer, Exile Faker, and, and a few others who um, started playing shows at IO amongst other places that they played. And then later went on to Pulse Wave, and then later went on to Blue Festival. Um, you know, that we had the opportunity to, to be one of the places that they got uh, some of the, the experience that they needed to, to move on to other things. So um, as long as we can continue to do that and just um, make sure we can uh, further the community in a positive way, then I think uh, whatever we do, if we keep sight of that goal, then it'll, it'll work out. It'll work itself out. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure out the details later.